Becoming a good public speaker is essentially all about telling a good story. And by using the art of storytelling, you'll find it much easier to piece your story together. So, what is storytelling? Storytelling is a term that has been popularized in recent years by the world of marketing and communication, but in fact, it has existed for centuries. It's efficient because it allows you to transmit a message from one human being to another by activating their emotions such as empathy and sensitivity. It's true that it's much easier for our brain to retain a story rather than a concept, and that's because it's easy to remember something that has had an emotional effect on us. That could be either a story that made us laugh or something that reminds us of our childhood. Now, a lot of people who struggle with speaking in public will say that it's impossible for them as they're not charismatic speakers and they don't know how to tell stories. Rest assured, anybody can learn. In reality, the majority of people who are successful public speakers or give fantastic presentations were not born that way. They're in fact very well trained. Being a good public speaker really is a case of practice makes perfect. For those of us who struggle with shyness, you must remember that in fact being shy is not a weakness. It can be used as an advantage, as it can show a certain human aspect in the speaker that allows the audience to identify with them. What works in storytelling are the details, the subtleties, the failings which make up the charm of the speaker. So what are the rules and ingredients to becoming a good storyteller? Well, you'll find them anywhere as they are used to create all of our favorite series, films, and books. It's always the same rules. So what are these components? First of all, you have the hero. Then you have their particular quest, followed by their objective. After that, you have the auxiliary characters and events which help them in their quest and have a positive effect. Finally, you have the opponents, which could be the enemies or negative events which will try to ruin the hero's quest. Every story has the same structure and begins by point A and ends with point B. In between, a variety of things happen. The first incident shows cause for concern, followed by another series of incidents that show the adventure and struggles of the hero. Finally, there is the resolution, which marks the end of the story. In order to understand the concept of storytelling and help you to build the content for your personal speech, we'll be analyzing the well-known animated film, The Little Mermaid, by using the concepts of storytelling. And keep in mind, most films, especially romantic comedies, musicals, and other happy ending or feel-good movies follow the same structure. So let's take the story of The Little Mermaid and have a closer look at the components. First of all, who is the hero? Princess Ariel, or otherwise known as Little Mermaid. What is her quest? To have legs. What is her objective? To be able to walk and therefore join human beings in their world. Now, let's take a look at her auxiliaries. We have Flounder and Sebastian, and at the end, her father who agrees to help her have legs. Finally, who are her opponents? Ursula, of course, but we can also consider the fact that she is a mermaid and doesn't have legs. Her father could also be seen as an opponent at the beginning of the film. So, we have the components of the story. Now let's look at the structure. What is the Little Mermaid's initial situation? The initial situation is that Ariel meets and falls in love with Eric, a human being. What is the cause for concern? King Triton, Ariel's father, who is furious at the fact she has approached human beings, forbids her to go near humans again and destroys her possessions and memories associated with Eric. Like any good story, you have a variety of incidents. Let's have a look at them. By defying her father's authority, Ariel put herself in danger by making a pact with Ursula for her magic powers. She is given legs for three days, but in exchange loses her voice. She discovers the human world, then becomes a mermaid again, and Ursula's captive. Then, of course, we have the resolution, which is when her father fights and overcomes Ursula and then transforms his daughter into a human. So, what is the resolved situation? Ariel can live happily ever after with Eric in the human world. The story might seem a little bit naive to begin with, but the great thing is that the structure can be reproduced and adapted to any context even a professional content, which is what we're going to look at in the next chapter.